Today, I wanted to take some time to answer more in-depth. One of the more common questions I get from viewers of the channel is, Hey DT, why don't you use BSD? Because people really want to know why I use Linux on my main production machine here at the office and on my home computer. You know, why am I a GNU slash Linux user? Why haven't you moved to BSD yet? Because, you know, you can use BSD, you can get it installed, you can work it out because you do all of this other stuff. I understand why people ask this question, but... I mean, I'm I'm one of those people, obviously, a lot of people see me as a more advanced user, a power user, and I tend to dive pretty deep into various topics. For example, text editors, right? I started using Vim a few years back, and then I progressed even deeper than that, going into Emacs, and these are really nerdy, deep kinds of topics here, Vim and Emacs. It is seen as something that is difficult to learn something really difficult to master and a lot of people think that me and other power users like this we often do these things more for a challenge more for looking cool in the public side you know we're trying to get style points that's why we use this hard stuff it's because you know it's like we're crack addicts right and then in this case we're addicted to just using really hard stuff is because we're i don't know some kind of self masochist right we just we just enjoy the pain but that's actually not the case i again i think a lot of people that don't use these kinds of tools like vim and emacs and tiling window managers and you know the command line and things like that these really nerdy topics you know the power user kind of tools you know they imagine that you know we're just doing this j just for the pain right <laughs> just to, or just to look cool but that's not actually the case i use all of this stuff because it's the best tool for the job so why don't i use bsd because the bsd operating systems are not as good as good news slash linux that is the only reason i don't use bsd on my main production machine it's not for any kind of ideological reasons or anything like that GNU slash linux is free and open source software the BSD operating systems are all free and open source software as well. So ideologically, uh, morally, I have absolutely no issues with BSD. I could use BSD right? if, if I didn't do what I do as far as making all of this video content and stuff like that. I, I know a ton of people are going to watch this video and say, well, I use OpenBSD and NetBSD or whatever you know BSD operating system you're using on your machine, but you're not doing what I'm doing, right? You're, you have some very basic needs on a computer, and I get that. And if that's working for you, keep using it, right? I, I, I'm not ever going to tell people what operating system they should run. Uh, I will say that the kinds of software that you should try to run are free and open source software, right? So I want people to use free and open source operating systems. And if one of the BSD operating systems is right for you, hey man, keep using it, right? Keep doing it. Now for me, I would be making my life extremely difficult by switching away from Linux to BSD because mainly hardware support. The Linux kernel supports practically every piece of hardware known to man, right? It's the best operating system kernel on the planet bar none the BSD kernels, and they all have a different kernel, right? So the free BSD kernel is probably going to be the best one as far as hardware support, and it's miles behind Linux. I mean, it's so far away from Linux, it's not even close. Software availability as well. A lot of the software I use on Linux will not be available on any of the BSD operating systems. So I would be sacrificing a lot of what I do. You know, a lot of what I do currently, as far as my workflow and making uh, uh, videos, you know, a lot of what I do with video, a lot of what I do with audio, I couldn't do on any of the BSD operating systems. I, I would really be sacrificing like the quality of my channel, <laughs> really, to, to move to one of the BSD operating systems. Why would I do that, right? Uh, if I'm going to give up so much to move from Linux to BSD, well, what's the payoff? What, what's the trade-off? I gotta, if I'm gonna give up something, I hope that I'm gonna get something in, in return, right? And no, there's really no trade-off. You know, I'm gonna give up a whole lot, and I'm not gonna get anything in return when I get to the BSD operating systems. Uh, you know, other than I guess if I was one of these elitist, arrogant kind of people that 
I tried to validate myself by using really hard pieces of software, then I, I guess it would be a positive to say, hey, man, I'm a BSD user, and now I can lord over those peasants that are still running Linux. But I, again, I'm not one of those type of people. I don't care uh, what people think about the software I use. I never have. That's not the reason I use tiling window managers. That's not the reason I use Arch Linux. You know, I, I use these things, Emacs. The reason I use these pieces of software is because it's the best tool for the jobs that I'm trying to do, right? And if BSD was the best tool for the job, I'd gladly move to it. One day, they'll probably get there. And when they do, I'll, I'll give them a try. I may install them on my main production machine, things like that. But right now, it's not even, it's, it's nowhere close. And that's okay. Uh, it's, that's not throwing shade on any of those operating systems. I'm happy the BSD operating systems are around. I'm also happy that we have other free and open source operating systems around like Haiku and React OS. And I, I've actually done some videos, some install and first impressions of these various operating systems, like the free BSD uh, operating system and Haiku and React OS. I've taken a look at some of the BSDs on camera, Ghost BSD, True OS back in the past before it died, a PC BSD back in the past before it died so it's not like I'm anti BSD I just can't use it on my main production machine for what I do and of course I'm making this video because a lot of people imagine that maybe I don't give BSD a lot of coverage or a lot of love here on the channel because I'm some kind of BSD hater I've been accused of that which is a little strange because I never talk about BSD, so we're like, how can I be a hater? Like, it's a topic that almost never comes up anywhere on my channel, but apparently I must be a hater because I use Linux. Well, not, not necessarily. I actually, I really don't care about Linux. I don't care about BSD, and I really don't care about Windows. I don't care about Mac OS. This channel, these videos I make, I are really not about operating systems. I made this channel to promote free and open source software, right? And both Linux and BSD are free and open source software. So in my eyes, they are equal as far as from a moral standpoint, right? Linux, BSD, both free and open source operating systems. They're fantastic in, in my eyes, both of them for that. Uh, but at the end of the day, which one will I use? I'm going to use the one that's right for me. And you should use the one that's right for you. I've also been asked, you know, do I have a problem with the BSDs because of licensing? Because everyone knows I'm a pretty big fan of the GPL, the GNU public license. And I do love the GPL. I try to license a lot of my stuff under the GPL. But again, at the end of the day, I promote free and open source software. And free and open source software is pretty much anything that's licensed under the GPL or the BSD license. It counts as a free and open source license or the MIT license, the Apache license, uh, the Mozilla public license, the MPL. Th th those are the five big ones, right? <laughs> So anything under those licenses, it's free and open source software. Now, I prefer the GPL among those licenses, but they all count as free and open source software. So again, from a moral standpoint, the BSD license is okay in my opinion. I, I run plenty of software on my GNU slash Linux system that is licensed under the BSD license or the MIT license. So it's it's not like it's evil in terms of it's not proprietary software, right? They're all free and open source licenses. So that's not a, a, a issue for me as far as, you know, the licensing for BSD. And some people have asked if maybe I had a problem with some of the uh, BSD communities. I typically don't interact a lot with communities online because of my status here, you know, having this rather popular YouTube channel, right? Uh, I'm a well-known quantity. And, you know, once you have a pretty good following of people then the haters and trolls just come out of the woodwork. You're just constantly bombarded with people that just want to take shots at you. So I don't really hang out on any community. I don't hang out on any Linux communities. You never see me you know, do anything in any uh, Linux support form or hang out. I, I don't hang out on Discord and Matrix, anything like that is because I'm, I would be a major distraction. I really don't care about haters and trolls. You know, what people say to me, come at me with attacks, it doesn't bother me. But I don't want other people to have to deal with my haters and trolls so that I don't hang out in other communities because I don't want these innocent bystanders, you know, to catch a bullet that was intended for me. And this is 
I, I don't hang out on any BSD community. So the BSD community, I, I, I don't know if it's a, a cool place, a, a bad place. I do know the, the probably the reason people ask this question is a few years ago, I know there was a controversy with the FreeBSD guys where FreeBSD actually changed their code of conduct because they wanted to ban virtual hugs. Virtual hugs, I guess... You know, like sending people emojis of hugs and kisses, you know, showing affection with these virtual hugs and kisses. The FreeBSD guy said, no, that's akin to, you know, unwanted sexual advancements on people. And they forbid sending virtual hugs, which is rather ridiculous, right? Like everyone, there was a lot of backlash from that because everyone saw how ridiculous needing to change of code of conduct to ban virtual hugs is but that doesn't bother me i mean I, it's silly but that wouldn't prevent me from being a free bsd user like i don't really care it's not an issue and to be honest that's the kind of issue that comes up in every community where you these days unfortunately it's a sign of the times people so many people have this activist mindset where they're they they want to be seen as changing the world even if it means inventing a problem that's not really there, like this virtual hug problem, right? It's not like the world was going to implode one day because there were too many virtual hugs being sent out on the internet, right? But, you know, this person wanted to be seen as making some kind of important change in the world. So, you know, he targeted virtual hugs and that's okay, right? I mean, at the end of the day, no one was hurt by those virtual hugs and nobody's really hurt by banning those virtual hugs. Now, I know in the comments of this video, many people are going to tell me the benefits of various BSD operating systems, all oh, things that are better on free BSD. You know, you're going to love the, the networking stack on BSD rather than Linux. That's great. If I worked on servers as a sysadmin or whatever, I'm, I'm a desktop computer user. That's primarily what I do. So if I was a, a server administrator, yes, I would love BSD. I'm not. I know people are going to, you know, the, the OpenBSD guys are going to tell me that it's the most secure operating system in the world. And, you know, if you, if you really care about security, then you should be using the OpenBSD operating system. And I do care about security, but that their security comes at a price. Again, hardware support, software availability. Yeah, I'm going to have a really secure operating system that I can't do a lot of the stuff I want to do on. So that's a trade-off I can't make. But now other people will make. And if it's a trade-off you can make, hey, again, I won't fault you for it, but please don't fault me for making my decision either. Now, I mentioned I'm not really a fan of Linux as much as I'm a fan of free and open source software. So what I would really love, I would love all of these non-Linux operating systems, the free and open source operating systems like FreeBSD and OpenBSD and Haiku and ReactOS, I would love for them to eventually get to the point where they are a real viable alternative to GNU slash Linux to where, you know, I could just, if I needed to, one day drop Linux and move to one of these other operating systems and not miss a beat. Because I do worry right now, with free and open source operating systems, we really have one. It's, it's a serious contender to the proprietary operating systems. And that's GNU slash Linux, right? Uh, the BSDs, not e anywhere close. And Haiku and ReactOS and, and you know, the really niche operating systems like that are decades behind. And that makes me sad because I could envision a day where Linux becomes unusable. For whatever reason, maybe they change the license, right? One day Linux becomes proprietary. That's never going to happen. But, you know, whatever nightmare scenario, end of the world scenario, maybe because the code base so many millions of lines long, you know, there's gaping security holes in it one day that just makes it very, very dangerous to use Linux. And I have to find something else. And right now, if that happened today, if that happened today, the best free operating system that isn't a GNU slash Linux distribution is FreeBSD. By far, that's that's the best. That's the closest thing we have to Linux, FreeBSD. And it's so far behind, right? And that makes me sad because, you know, I fear that day happening. And right now, if it happened, I'd have to sacrifice so much. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd, I would lose so much. Now, to be fair, if that day ever happened, FreeBSD would probably overnight have thousands and th tens of thousands of new developers because a lot of the people that worked on Linux would just move over to FreeBSD and it would quickly gain a lot of the hardware support, a lot of uh, software availability, you know, a lot of 
software ports would be written. So it would get there pretty quickly, but it would be painful for a while. But ultimately, this rather lengthy rant video to answer this very simple question. I mean, this this the answer to this question, why I don't use BSD is simply, you know, for what I do, GNU slash Linux is better. And that really is the answer. But a lot of people ask this question over and over. It's one that comes up. And a lot of people, I think, imagine the answer are all of these other things I talked about today. You know, things that are, have nothing to do with it. B BSD it's free and open source software. Morally, I'm fine with it. I have absolutely no issues becoming a BSD user at some point in the future. I, it doesn't bother me. But right now, GNU slash Linux, it's kind of where I have to be. And right now I'm just I'm comfortable with it. And I don't, again, I'm not one of these people that has to validate my existence through the software I use. You know, I don't need to feel morally superior. I, I don't, I don't need to use FreeBSD or OpenBSD or whatever to make the Linux peasants feel bad, right? To lord over them and say, I'm a BSD user. Look at you. You're still running Arch. Ah, you noob. Anyway, ran over, guys. Peace.